Les Kevin, more tech. tech from UTech IT. All right, so we're, we're going to just roll right into this because we had a great story here last, didn't we? And uh, it's a shame that Johnny was sleeping at the wheel and didn't have this yeah, recorded. Yeah. But uh, today our guest is Mike Cosgrove from PCI Insurance. And Mike, let's just go back since since uh, Bazooka was sleeping and it just started and get <laughs> with, a great with the story. story. Yeah, it, with, it, it uh, really is. Uh, sure. How you got started in in the business, or actually how your mom started the. How the agency, agency got started? Yeah, okay. yeah that was so, pretty neat. So, uh, name of the agency that uh, that I'm uh, uh, thankfully and, and blessed to be the president of now is called PCIA. stands for Professional Concepts Insurance Agency. But uh, it started in '88. And um, story is, my family's from Southern Indiana. We owned a pancake restaurant. I hadn't even told you guys that part. We lived above the pancake restaurant, and we were open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week, except Sundays we were not open for dinner. And, uh, and so I grew up watching my dad mop the floors on Sunday evenings. And I thought to myself, I am never going in the restaurant business, you know? And, and so if we go out, I'm always super, you know, any kind of wait staff and that, my God, they get extra tip from me. Cause I, and I always remember that for some reason, but, uh, long story short, our, uh, our folks divorced at a young age and my mother moved to Louisville, Kentucky, which was two hours, uh, two hours from where we lived in Washington, Indiana. And, uh, um, went to work, uh, or went to a headhunter to find a job. And, and, uh, in a nutshell, they made her, made her cry in the meeting and, and, uh, um, uh, or she cried in the meeting cause they said, honey, you don't have any skills. And back then they use those types of terms, you know, mm-hmm. like, honey, you don't have any skills. And so she cries and they said, well, maybe we can have you work uh, what, here. What year is that? What are we talking? This would have been in, uh, let's see, I'm 45, so I'm thinking it was probably right around, because I was born in 76, so it was right around in 80, Eight, okay. 81 at best, you know, kind of a thing. But um, uh, so, yeah, so she, uh, oh. um, uh, they said, well, you know, geez, you know, geez, young lady, we can probably have you work here. You know, I'm just envisioning what they said in the South, being from the South, you know, it's, especially back then it was a little different, but, um, uh, so they had her work there. And, uh, so they sit her at a desk. She has this Rolodex. Most people, you know, maybe the people listening don't even know what a Rolodex is, right. but they had a Rolodex and, uh, her job was to find people jobs. And, and about halfway through the day, if I'm remembering the story correctly, she hated that job. She said, this is a terrible job and hell, I'll just find my own job. I can and- do better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, so as she looked through the Rolodex, there was a, a an opportunity for um, a position at an insurance agency, mm-hmm. and so she went to work for an insurance agency as the receptionist, and and kind of fell in love with insurance, and it was her first uh, exposure to the insurance industry, and then uh, three jobs later, um, she was hired in as as sales, but you know, unfortunately, back in the eighties uh, in the South, as a as a as a lady, as a female, she was expected to be in the office, pretty high heels. And, and, uh, you can do anything on the inside of the office, but you were not allowed to go out and visit clients for mm. the most part. So that's where she, uh, she, she realized, all right, I'm, I'm going to learn everything I can from these guys and I'm going to do my own gig and better and better. Right. So, uh, um, uh, so anyways, long story short, in, in 1988, then, uh, um, she bought a house in Ypsilanti, Michigan, and we moved uh, to Ypsilanti and we, lived there when she started the agency and, and, uh, uh, so we had zero clients. Now we've got, uh, basically about a thousand professional firms between engineering firms, architectural firms, CPA firs, law firms, and technology clients. What an amazing success story. Yeah. yeah. yeah Bazooka, so. you got this going, right? You're not sleeping. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the nickname was Bazooka. I love this, you know, but, uh, um, yeah, she, uh, uh, she's a, she's a gritty lady. And actually I was on, uh, oh gosh, it's on seven. I think it's on seven sixty that, uh, startup nation, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. startup nation is radio, radio podcast. And they had actually had me come in and we kind of talked about that. Story That's a too. great story. So, yeah. I mean, talk about entrepreneurial drive. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, facing the challenges of being a female in a male dominated sure. industry. Exactly. And, and I think what that's always said to me and, and, you know, I've got daughters, Kevin knows this. I've got uh, an 18 year old and a 13 year old daughter. And, and, uh, um, I mean, I grew up in this household, you know, with a sister and a mom and then having daughters. I mean, 
they can do absolutely anything. And 99% of the time they do it better than we do it as guys, you know, so <laughs> admitted, <laughs> admitted. Exactly. Exactly. So well, I, I tell you, there's, there's that Cosgrove determination and grit that, uh, it started with your mom, and I, I know it's definitely been passed off to you because I've always wished all my sales guys worked at as hard as you do at this. And and you're, here you are, the president of uh, your own agency. Sure, you, you've got a wonderful team of like 10, 12 people there that are they're delivering excellent customer service every day. But uh, what, what can we find you doing every day? And it, it's the headphones on, it's the calling. I mean, I, I've heard stories of you going to uh, Grand Rapids for meetings, and uh, he hires a driver because he doesn't want to waste his time driving when he could be making phone calls and working with customers yeah. and, and prospecting. It's it just that determination that, uh, that you see if anybody's done business with PCIA, they know they, they see that carried over every day sure. that it, it, it's their, their interests are well protected and, uh, and you look out for them every day. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, it, uh, and it's funny, the whole driver thing, it sounds so pretentious and I, and I've always shied away from that. So thank you for outing, outing me on, uh, on the podcast, but, uh, uh, no, another local business, a buddy of mine, we, we share this gentleman that, uh, uh, he actually is, uh, my guy's name is Jim and Jim, I'm not gonna say his last name, but super good guy. He is a uh, fraud detector mm -hmm. for insurance and, in, in uh, law firms. And, um, but he's looking to retire and he's, he wanted to do this. And, and, uh, my buddy Steve had, uh, they, they'd made a connection. And so basically Steve and I share share Jim and, and uh, swap days and this and that, but it just allows me then to continue helping our clients and there's no breakdown in communication because I'm driving two hours or you know, something yeah. like that. So you're so. improving productivity. You're helping a guy out. Exactly. Your clients are benefiting. Yes. Win-win yeah. win all the way around. It, it's a total win-win, but I, I do kind of shy away from, I, you know, I usually don't have firms knowing that I do that because I just feel like people look at you funny. But, I mean, Jim and I shoot the breeze for a few minutes or whatever, but then I'm on the phone with clients or on my laptop, you know, and all that good well, it, stuff. It, it's not pretentious, and I, I think it speaks to uh, to the testament of, of how hard you work for your clients and be, uh, on behalf of your clients that, uh, hey, you, you're, you're not driving and, and trying to – take care of their needs right i mean we've all seen sure. those people in left hand lane and we're like i get you know right. what i mean and or, or they're not paying attention and, and they're becoming a liability on the road but uh well, and but actually, you're working hard you know yeah. you are calling people and sure. you know, resolving our issues you know if we have any issues or you know are what, their Kevin? issues or it would be pretentious if you didn't call him jim and <laughs> called him james oh. <laughs> james, james. Yeah. <laughs> Now that would be. I never really, really <laughs> thought about that. That's pretty funny. You know, and I'll tell you, one of the main reasons why I thought, you know, I need to do this is because while we all try to be super careful when we're driving, I mean, I'm getting phone calls and, you know, and, and obviously I'd use the, the hands free and all of that good stuff, but I still just thought, you know what, my head, when I get on a phone, I'm on, my head's in somewhere else. And actually, mm -hmm. Les, you and I talked about this today. I mean, I'm on the phone, my head is somewhere else and I'll miss an exit and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like what we were talking <laughs> right. about. And so I just thought, you know, I need to do something. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, um, anyways, long story short, I've worked with Jim now for, uh, I don't know, three, three, four years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. well, I can say, cause we're a client, uh, you know, of yours and, and you represent our interests, uh, wonderfully. And I, I go to sleep at night knowing that, Hey, we're insured, we're covered and, and, and you're, you've got our best interests at heart, but, um, that's what you do for everybody. And sure. it, it's that great service. So, um, along with that, just, just give us your specialty is, is professional firms, right? Sure. And uh, so it's ar architectural, engineering, CPA you know, IT firms, companies. IT, mm -hmm. law, Lawyer. yep, yeah. lawyers. So all, all professional services, which I, you know, I, I literally say we have the literally the best clients in the entire world. I mean, obviously, very very smart people we get to work with. But, you know, our staff, I mean, we talk about this all the time as a group that uh, you better bring your A-game. I mean, it, our firms expect top-notch, you're on it, there's no waiting, things move very fast, it, it's got to get done and get done right. It can't be... Quality. Uh, it's got to be quality, exactly. And, and there sits a sign in your kitchen that says, bring your A-game. Exactly. Yeah, Every my, day. My 18-year-old uh, wrote that, it's a chalkboard, and, and wrote the bring your A-game, um, I think it says bring your A-game always uh -huh. kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So... so so jokingly and carrying on with the spirit, Les says to me, he goes, hey, Kevin, it's about time we got a really pretentious customer on there. You know what I mean? And let's get somebody to really shock the folks out there, the, the three people that are, are listening to this podcast. So I said, hey, we can do that. So let's, right. let's call uh, Mr. Cosgrove over at PCIA and see if, uh, 
if, if you'd come on and talk to us. And so thank you for coming sure. in here. But glad uh, to glad I want to share with our, you know, uh, folks listening that, uh, you know, why you picked uh, UTech and, and what we do for you. Sure, sure. We, um, so as an organization, uh, you know, we're, we're a smaller organization and, and we've worn, you know, we all wear many hats and that type of a thing. But I tell you, um, what UTech has done for us and, and just as a side note, what UTech, what UTech does is uh, handles all of our computer needs, laptops, home computers, sc- you know, the screens, the, the phone system. Um, we've actually not even had phones in our office in, uh, it's been years. We just have headsets. And, mm-hmm. and I remember when we went to that, that model, the staff all cringed at me and I said, just give it a month because we dial from our computers, right? And then you have a headset. I mean, I, I have the same thing that they have and... Um, I wouldn't change it. And, right. and I tell you, I mean, they moaned and groaned, you know, like everybody does with change. And I said, give me a month. If you absolutely hate it, we'll get you a hard phone on your, on your desk, you know, on your desk kind of thing. And not one complaint. I don't think anybody would go back, but, um, uh, copier, we have that. What's our big board called? What's that? Uh, the Aquasport. Aquasport. Mm-hmm. I always think it's such a weird name. Aquasport. <laughs> yeah. So, so we have Aqu- a- yeah. Aquas is the, the name of the product, but the technology, it's an interactive flat panel display. Sure. Okay. Gotcha. Which is even goofier. Basically it's a, (laughs) basically it's a touch screen computer and it's huge and it's big. Yeah. So, um, we've always been big on being cutting edge and, uh, uh, you know, just making sure that things happen again, kind of going back to our conversations about bring your a game always Mm -hmm. things got to happen fast. I mean, if things aren't happening fast and I think that's what you tech, UTech does for us, and and you know before we got started, we were all kind of talking about your your um, what do you call it your call center? Mm-hmm. Yeah, their help desk. Yeah, yeah, and help desk. And I mean to tell you, it's like instantaneous. You know, you know if something's not all of a sudden, my computer is sending uh, a certain client. I just had this yesterday. Sending a certain client's emails all to spam, mm-hmm. and I can't find it in my spam folder either. You know, I, I put the ticket in, and I mean within seconds, I got right. Like, well, who's reading over my shoulder over there at UTech? You know, <laughs> but. Um, uh, so I don't, did that answer? Well, your question listening and we can tell her what she's getting for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we saw, we saw those emails. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, there's a, along those lines, I, well, I don't know, maybe a month, two months ago, I'm, I get an email alert over the weekend that some of your uh, credentials were up for sale on oh. the uh, dark web. So I call Aaron, you know, Aaron. Sure. And, uh, so Aaron got on the phone, uh, with you and your staff and we, in, practical real time we were able to you know walk you through the uh, the password changes sure that you folks needed sure and i don't think there was any way you could have known that your credentials were out on the dark oh, web i would have no idea yeah yeah right yeah so yeah, so, so you tech monitors that for us i mean yep. we back in uh, i think it was maybe april or so we put uh, multi-factor authentication in place so um I, I mean basically any kind of technology need we've got you know, you tech handles it for us so that we're not guessing at it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think so many times firms will, well, I can go to Best Buy and just buy, I mean, that's yeah. garbage. Don't do that. You know, and, and somebody told me a long time ago, I'd gone to a conference and, and I remember the speaker saying if, and, and again, um, you know, I, you know, I come from a very humble, humble beginning and that type of thing. But like, as an example, the speaker said, uh, Hey, if you're cutting your own grass, you're taking somebody else's job. Mm. And I always thought that was so interesting. Right. I thought, well, you you are kind of taking somebody else's job, and usually they'll do it better than you will, mm-hmm. right? And and so I think the same thing with like technology. I think a lot, you know, smaller firms will go, well, I'll just do it myself instead of hiring the experts that see that you know on Saturday afternoon, Mike's you know information shows up on the black web. I mean, right. that's like invaluable, right? right? I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, especially in today's world of cyber claims mm-hmm. and ransoms and all that nonsense. I always like to see that same customer say he does his own dental work too, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and nothing against people that do some of their own stuff, you know what I mean? And I, and I, you know, I, I do actually enjoy uh, doing those kind of things, but, uh, but that just, that, that phrase has always resonated with me that uh, if you're doing it, you're taking mm-hmm. somebody else's job. Right. So, yeah. So we appreciate you as a client. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate, appreciate working with you all. And uh, uh, you know, I, I, I look at UTech the same as, you know, I hope our clients look at us is that I, I trust that you all are going to be there when we need you. And you always are. Mm. You've never given me a reason not to think that. And in a way things go and, uh, you know, the, the world keeps buzzing along. Well, I, I think as we talk about with our staff and, uh, you know, our, our sales reps, but uh, just, just all our people and everything, I, I want them looking. And, and why we wanted to have you on was that, uh, 
it's a partnership, and, and that's really what we want. I mean, there's a lot of transactional things you can do out there. And I, I guess we'll take a transactional deal, but that really doesn't move the needle for me. And what I like is a partnership because it's like-minded yeah. companies, right? We, we both strive to be the best. It's about the customer experience, and sure. we want to deliver that. But it's also how we've been able to work together. And, and so uh, you've come in, you, you've looked at our insurance needs, said, hey, you got gaps here, or, or you know, you're, maybe, you're, maybe you're too heavy in this area and you need to do something over here. But, but you put a plan together for us, right. and, and, and you put us on a plan to make sure we're protected. And then likewise, we've come in with you and looked at your technology. We've addressed different things. You said, you know, here's where, here's where I'm at, but here's where I want to be, and right. we've come up with a plan to get you there. But uh, so, so that's good for both of us sure. trend, business-wise, right? Absolutely. But Absolutely. what we've done outside of that is we've introduced you to our uh, our customers sure. to make sure that, that we don't want to say, that, hey, you got to do business with them because I didn't, nobody likes to be forced to do anything. Sure. But we've just said, hey, just talk, have a conversation with Mike. He'll tell you if you've got the right insurance. And, yeah. and people don't understand that with their insurance company. You right. know, I think it's uh, especially with the cybersecurity stuff. But we've worked with you that way. We've introduced each other to mm-hmm. clients and, and really had to, had the backs out for 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 our clients on you know whether a PCI client or a UTech client, sure. Uh, that we want to make sure that they're they're aligned with the best. So it's right, right. great. Yeah, I, and I <clears throat> the approach for both organizations are somewhat similar. I mean, it, oh gosh, absolutely, drastically different offerings. Sure, right. Well, it's funny because I feel the same way about you know our our clients that we work with. I mean, it's professional service is professional service. It just depends on you know. I mean, obviously there's different nuances, but. Uh, you know, I'll use ACEC as an example, which is an association for uh, uh, for the engineering architectural community. And I, I, I mean, I go to the meetings not not to be a vendor. I go to mm-hmm. the meetings to I, I walk out of there with just as much notes in my notebook as anybody else. Right. I mean, business is business. Yeah. You know, but they need that they need um, that avenue of knowledge. It's so similar, or right. excuse me, it's so easy to get inundated with the internet. Yes web you know they that ability for you to bring knowledge to them sure you know as well as learn from them right in, in that kind of environment's invaluable sure for probably both parties well and i think kevin kevin used the exact term that i, I like to use too is that uh i mean the transactional relationship that isn't much of a relationship right i mean there's no, just I mean, not much to it i mean and, and we all have some of that but that's not what gets us up in the morning you no, know the, no. the transactional pieces mm-hmm. so that's awesome. Yeah. Well, you could, yeah, you, you want to be with like-minded people. And, and, and again, it, it, you're a connector, right? You're a connector out there on behalf of your clients, your connector on, you know, on behalf of us. And that's what we try to play a role in there. And you know, we may not do any business with somebody for three or four years, but we've connected them with three or four people. Right. And then down the road, they'll, uh, it'll pay off some way. Yeah. So. So, so growing up in the South, I was always told, do what you say you're going to do. When you said you're going to do it, say please and thank you, and yeah. you better be open the door for the next person. <laughs> Let, uh, leave the wood pile a little bit higher <laughs> than, than when you got there. Yeah. So that reminds me, you, you referenced the South a couple of times, and now you're up here in Michigan. My my in-laws always used to say, you, you know how you tell the difference between a rich hillbilly and a poor hillbilly? What's that? Well, the rich hillbillies could afford two tanks of gas, so they got to Michigan. The poor <laughs> ones had to stop in Ohio. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> That's pretty funny. You can, you can say that being uh, from Ohio and that. Yeah, kind of so, thing, right? so, so we grew up a poor hillbilly. You happen to be a rich hillbilly. So good. congratulations. You were born on third base. Yeah. <laughs> I think you hit a triple, right? Oh, boy. That's funny. I, I, I wish I had kept. a little jab from Ohio State. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Hey, so where do you see uh, PCI going? I mean, what is your vision? Direction. Yeah. So I, you know, I have always been uh, um, very, very um, uh, in tune to what we do and do well. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to be all things to all people. Mm-hmm. I have zero interest in that. And in a lot of in in our industry specifically, the insurance industry, there's some agencies that are very successful being generalist. Mm-hmm. And 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 I've just always steered away from that. I think my mom set an amazing foundation up for us. Um, as far as uh, the types of clients that we work with, and we really don't deviate from that. I mean, I'm happy to, if I get introduced to somebody at a cocktail party or something like that, and and they're like, you know, geez, that we're, a, um, I don't know, um, an asphalt company, and mm-hmm. I need help, and I, that isn't me, but 
I'm happy to sit down with their agent and review what the agents come up with. And, you know, if I meet somebody that I like from a relationship standpoint, but I don't have the expertise in those right. fields. And so I, I, I like, I believe in staying in my lane. Uh, but as far as the future goes, we're really focused on some acquisitions, some, so acquiring some, some other agencies, no different than a lot of industries. We've got a lot of folks retiring right. and, and at 45, I think we've got a prime opportunity to, to bring in folks that maybe, you know, want to work another two, five mm -hmm. years or whatever, and, and, uh, want to be part of something, uh, something larger. And, and, um, so yeah, I'd say some acquisitions would be. So, Hey, I'm, I'm going to digress this uh, little yeah. conversation here, but who do you think they run faster from? You said at a cocktail party, somebody comes up to you and you oh. say, hey, I sell insurance or, hey, I sell coffee. So, <laughs> how fast does that person run from you at Ex that party? Exactly. Uh, Usually before I even say that that, uh, that I'm in insurance, I, I, I'll, I'll, let, I'll, I'll mention that my wife is a school teacher. So I usually right. divert because they love talking to the teachers. They love the teachers. Well, that, and Kevin, we, we both got that yeah, advantage, don't Kevin, we? Kevin, yeah. your wife's a teacher too, of course. Because yeah, otherwise nobody so. talked to us at a cocktail party. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's an old joke. If you want to, you know, have a quiet flight, just tell the person next door or you're sitting next to you that you sell insurance. Right. And <laughs> Isn't that funny? Nice, quiet. Or, or what ha ends up happening too, is I get all kinds of just crazy questions, you know, on things that I don't even do. Oh, right. You know, they always want to go into, I got this barn on my property. And I'm like, look, I don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, so, so you, you said you're, you're looking at some acquisitions maybe down the road yes. to, to grow that, I mean, professional thing, but uh, it, it, I think your growth, from what I've seen from the outside, it just how you service the customer, and I, I, I love staying on that because mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in customer experience, oh, yeah. and I think that uh, anybody doing business with you uh, sees that right away. Sure, sure. We're, and actually, one of our um, initiatives for 2022 uh, the group doesn't know it yet, but it's one of my initiatives for our group is uh, um, we're doing some training on or we'll be doing some training on being non-transactional. Again, going mm -hmm. back to your your statement, but being non-transactional and more consultate, consultative, mm -hmm. relationship based. You know what I mean? I mean, it, I've always said if someone answers the phone, hi, this is Mike, how can I help you? That says to the other person, get down to business. That's that's how I've answered the phone. I don't answer the phone that way. If it, no matter who calls me on my cell at the office, I always answer the phone. This is Mike. Yeah. You know what okay. I mean? Cause it's like, if, if, if we got to sit down and, and slow the conversation and have a cup of coffee and just talk through what it is, my job is to anticipate the client's needs. So the client might be calling me asking about X mm -hmm. and I'll answer that of course. But then I'm like, boy, you know, you're asking about X, but I think you really should be thinking right. about Y and Z. Um, so so, so anyways, it, we're going to be doing some initiatives. In yeah. That so place. is that training going to be, uh, around, uh, questioning around, or, um, uh, more questioning, uh, uh you research know, because we haven't started it yet. Right. I'm not even a hundred percent sure, but more, um, we're bringing in a, um, a consultant to, to work with our, our entire group, all of us together and, uh, just kind of making sure that, I mean, we've got like a 98% renewal retention. I mean, our, Fantastic. yeah, I mean, our, our clients, I, you know, Jamie at the office, Jamie Piercy at the office, she says it the best way. She goes, we're like little animals, you know, we're just like all <laughs> over it, you know, and, and, and that really is our, uh, that is our culture. And, and, uh, and so we're, we're in a really good space and I want to keep us there and, and, you know, constantly tweak, you know, I'm all about what can we do a little bit here and a little bit there to continue to make sure that we're taking care of the, the client and that, uh, you know, they're feeling taken care right. of. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, well, I'll put my thinking cap on to see, uh, you know, some of the ways that we can, you know, take the technology that you've invested with us on to see if we can help you sure. on that journey. Sure. Without a doubt. Yeah. No, I'm absolutely. I already have a couple things percolating right now. Oh, well, I'm, I'm all ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what else is happening there at the PCI? Anything? Uh, I mean, I, great team, great culture. Uh, how's the recruiting been uh, for people? Are you looking for more people? You know, we're always looking for good people. I'll say, um, recruiting, we've, we've never really had much trouble there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, uh, if we can get, if we can get a, a potential candidate to come in, come in and have a cup of coffee with us. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, I, uh, um, I sound like I drink a ton of coffee. I have two <laughs> cups a day. Cause if I drink too much, I get too shaky, but two cups a day of coffee. But, uh, uh, you know, if I have somebody come and have a cup of coffee with coffee with me in the afternoon, 
I mean, I think they just get a feel for who we are and, and it, you know, if, if they're the right candidate, it, um, it usually works out pretty well, but we are always looking for good people. So yeah, I, I, I kind of threw that out there cause I, I know what, what you want for employees and yes. you see them in there and it, it, you're all about the culture and there, yeah. you know, how it looks uh, visually and, and how people, uh, want to come to work there, you know, cause yeah. it's a pleasant place to be, but it, it's about a certain attitude, right? You want people exactly. that, mm-hmm. uh, that want to work hard. Right. Want to deliver customer experience, but there's no slouchers running around. There oh, anymore. no, no. We, and it's funny because, uh, you know, we're, you know, I think that, uh, you know, the staff, the rest of the group, uh, you know, everybody that I get to work with, they're the same way. I mm-hmm. mean, it's kind of like if there was a, if there was a, a weak link, it stands out like a sore thumb really? and it just doesn't, I mean, we've got a lot of longevity with our staff and, and, uh, but, but when it comes to a, a, a weak link, they either step up. Or they're right. they're they're just not going to be able to, to self eliminate themselves. Exactly. Yeah, you know, we sometimes call that coaching them out. Right. You know, <laughs> we don't want to hold you back from what you should be doing. You know? Exactly. <laughs> Let me set you free right. so you can go find right. out your real L- calling. Luckily, we've not had too much of that. Yeah, but I mean, good. like any business, I mean, everybody's had a little. Bit, that really so. speaks to culture. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I'm not a shy guy, so it's. It, they're not going to be surprised what they're walking mm-hmm. into. You know what I mean? I mean, I have lots of interviews that uh, uh, I, I, I want to make sure it's as good of a fit for them as it is for us. I mean, if it isn't a good fit for both parties right. simultaneously, it, it isn't going to work. You know, it, it, and it, it, we all know Aaron and, you know, our audience. Aaron's our director of IT. But, sure. um, he's, Great guy. Yeah, he is fantastic. The people on his team are the are the first responders to, you know, you and in, in all of our other clients, but your culture carries through. Sure. When you're actually placing a call. Yeah, exactly. There's right. nobody going off the handle and it's, you know, we, we respond, you know, appropriately. Right. But yeah, no, he's, he's mentioned that a few times. Sure. That the relationship, you know, for service is fantastic. Yeah. And I just think that's just a common thread. Sure. Exactly. Well, and I think that's why the organizations, you know, match up so well. P- yeah. PCI and UTEC. You need to get your mom in here also just to find yeah. out how you got the thread. Right? Sure. No, I, you know, and actually I had her. We, she we, needs to have more kids, you know. We, we, need, we need more workers. That's what's wrong with our economy right now. We need yeah. more people like that. Oh, gosh. We, we, do need, uh, we do need workers, don't we? But um, actually my mom and I did do a podcast. I, it's been a, a few months ago now, but our podcast is called Pro Concepts. So P-R-O-C-O-N-C-E-P-T-S, but Pro Concepts. And uh, Kim and I did one day. I mm-hmm. call her Kim, you know, but, um, yeah. but mom and I did one together where we talked a little bit about her background and that kind of thing. That's awesome. So, I'm going to look it up. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, she, she is, uh, she is carrying on that though it, with her coaching. You know, she's doing some consulting and coaching she for is. folks out there too, isn't she? She is. Yep. She does some uh, um, coaching from a, a perspective for say young adults, um, you know, different people in her in the business industry. She, you know, just enjoys we've always had a, uh, because we come from, uh, you know, very, very humble beginnings. We believe in uh, a, a hand out, a hand up, not a handout. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so that's a philosophy within our family that um, I, I'm more than willing to help people. They got to be willing to help themselves. They got to be willing to, to go the extra mile and become mm-hmm. what they want to become. But I'm all about the, the hand up. Right. You walk, I walk, you run, so, I run. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. That's great. And I, and I think if more, you know, just from a social standpoint, if, if we had more of us doing that kind of stuff, I mean, my goodness, we could uh, do some amazing things. I agree with that. So, yeah. So uh, again, Mike, thanks for coming on. I, I appreciate you, uh, you know, trusting us to take care of your technology needs, whether it's a printer, copy, or, um, you know, Aquas board, the interactive display <laughs> sure. board, as you like to call it, or, or more importantly, with, with, with trusting your, you know, managing your network. And it's been a great relationship. And I appreciate uh, that we're able to introduce you to some of our clients and, and, and that you look out for their interests like you look out for ours for their insurance needs. So that's, uh, that's, that's very good there. Uh, real quickly, uh, you got a remarkable family. I happen to know you. So uh, sure. personally, outside of work professionally, just real quick, tell us about the family. Sure. Uh, so <clears throat> I've got a, a wife. We've been married 23 years. She is a second grade school teacher. Mm-hmm. And boy, is that a, uh, I'll call it a thankless job. That I explains mean, my, all the crayons around the house. Huh? Exa- exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, but uh, yeah, so uh, um, a second grade school teacher. And then I've got a 13 year old daughter who is our competitive dancer. 
really? and skier. She well, she doesn't do competitive ski, but she's a competitive dancer and then uh, is is a big skier, not a snowboarder. She's mm-hmm. a skier. And then uh, our oldest is eighteen. Kennedy is um, at Miami of Ohio, down in Oxford, Oxford, Ohio. Harvard of the Midwest. Harvard of the Midwest. Great exactly. Great I, I t- it's the only out of state school she um, um, she actually applied to, and uh, I, I would have never guessed I'd have a daughter or a, a child in a uh, out of state school. But um, we actually had an intern at the office, Hannah Jolly, and uh, Hannah went to Miami of Ohio. Now. Hannah's obviously graduated, married, and you know all that good stuff, and just an amazing person. But my daughter had met Hannah years ago, and Hannah continued to put that plug for Miami of Ohio, and so there we were. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, it, it, I, I know the university well, and it, it, it's a remarkable university. So it's is uh, Kennedy next in line uh, at the Great Cosgroves to run uh, yeah, a wonderful uh, insurance know, agency. It's, it's a good question. I, you know, she is uh, she is interested in insurance, but I believe in um, uh, making sure that your kids know that there's lots of different mm-hmm. avenues out there. And and again, you got to do what makes you happy every day. You can't go into a job you don't like. And so um, I would love to see her get the insurance bug and mm-hmm. say she wants to do this. But um, uh, she's in the uh, um, school. Um, Farmer School of Business, mm. so she's getting her degree in business and uh, struggling through calculus, mm-hmm. but uh, but I think she's she's going to do just fine. And um, uh, but yeah, in business, she's interested in real estate development, but I don't know that she really even knows exactly what that means. Uh-huh. But uh, but yeah, we'll see. Now, I'm not going to ask about the youngest because I know so she's going to be the next great social influencer. Oh sure. There. <laughs> who has a who, now could s- be. settle those for us? Who has a better TikTok, you or her? Well, it's <laughs> I, I will say I I have been known to do some TikToks. When when you're a girl dad, you do some TikToks, you know. And and uh, um, you know, it's funny. I I actually have a TikTok that got. I think recently 29,000 views on Ooh, this darn thing. And it's, see? it's so dumb. It's in regards to the cookies came missing. Mm-hmm. And so it's, a, you know, TikToks are like a voiceover. And I literally talk about, you know, basically where that, where, where are my damn cookies kind of thing. <laughs> and this thing just kind of blew up. But uh, when Soph and I do them together, I, we get less views. And so I've given Sophie a hard time that she's like my, 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 hey, you're uh, dragging me she's down, dragging girl. me down, you know, but, uh, Soph does just fine. So yeah, she yeah. does. Yeah, she does. So, <laughs> all right, before we, we send you out, we, we've got our, uh, bourbon here and yeah. I know you'll probably say all, but well, what's your favorite bourbon? So uh, at this point, um, you know, I'm kind of a middle of the road kind of, I mean, if I was at a bar and, and I'm going to get a bourbon, I'm going to get a Buffalo trace. Mm. Buffalo trace is just, you yeah. know, I think it's a, a fantastic, I don't have this sophisticated palate whatsoever. I mean, I got buddies that like angels envy. Actually, I just had a good friend, uh, um, uh, another couple give me, uh, something roses, three roses, four roses, four, four roses. roses. Yeah. And uh, so I haven't tried that yet. So I'm kind of curious about that one, but I got that in my cabinet now at home. But, um, well, if you need help, Les and I are available to come yeah, over and okay. help you try that All out. Right. You know? It could help. It'd be tough, but we'd, we'd help you evaluate sure. it. I, I need to do the little taste test, you know, mm-hmm. side by side and just see which one, but Buffalo Trace has always kind of been my go-to. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I agree with you. I've, I've got a cool client that, um, unfortunately he just passed away from, from cancer last week, as a matter of fact, and mm. just a really good dude, uh, Bill, Bill Ryder at, uh, at Walker parking and Bill and I were at a conference together. We both for the first time had tried Buffalo trace mm-hmm. and we were like, geez, this is like amazing, yeah. you know? And, and, uh, so this was a few years back. And so I think, uh, I don't know, two or three years ago, I sent him a Buffalo, uh, a bottle of Buffalo trace in the mail at Christmas time kind yeah. of thing, but super good guy. Straight so. up or over ice. I'm a big over, I'm a wimp. I'm, I'm over, I, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, you know, you know how you get older, you're like, I just don't even care what people think anymore. I don't even like the spear because the spear doesn't melt enough. I need cubes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, hey, here's to it. Uh, continue Cheers. success. And, Absolutely. Uh, best of luck. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Keep doing what you're doing and thank you, you for your Got partnership. It. Happy holidays, yeah, everybody. Sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.